What is up, ladies and gentlemen? This is the Chig coming at you with another World of Warcraft Season of Discovery Paladin Guide. Today I'm going to be telling you what I'm going to be doing getting into Phase 3, how I'm going to level, what I think will work properly. Right now, I am spec'd all the way Shockadin. I am all the way down to Holy Shock. I am level 40. I am killing a few minutes until the season drops. And I wanted to take a minute to explain to you guys what I think is going to work, why it's going to work, how it's going to work, and how to have fun with it. So, without further ado, let's hop right into it. So, as you can see, my gear is an amalgamation of things from the auction house, things from SM while I was leveling, and things from BFD. I have not stepped foot into Nomergon at all. I rerolled on this server a couple days ago because one of my buddies was talking about it. And that's what we're doing. So I have a lot of really bad gear. I spent a couple of gold on a decent weapon. I'll tell you why I'm using a slow weapon instead of a fast weapon here in a few minutes. And the rest of this is just an amalgamation of whatever. And I do have the blood coin trinket. So that's a thing. Anyway, let's hop right into what I have together now. What I'm going to be doing and why it matters. So here... I just went all the way down. I grabbed Divine Strength, Improved Seal of Righteousness, Divine Intellect, just all the points I could to make sure I got Holy Power and Holy Shock. As soon as I'm done, right before everything starts, I'm going to respec over to this spec. So, with this spec, you put five points into Divine Strength, five points into Spiritual Focus, the reason I'm going into Spiritual Focus is because we are going to be using Divine Storm to heal, but if we need to heal while we're out grinding mobs, we can switch that over, and we will be able to switch from our Devo Aura over to Concentration Aura, and we will not get interrupted. So, that's a big plus. Other than that, if you're only going to run dungeons, you can take those five points, Put them into Divine Intellect, and you'll be fine. You'll just have a little more um, mana pool. Consecration, amazing skill. Once we get the head rune, it can crit. This is our bread and butter, and the whole reason this whole strategy works. Consecration is just the best. All right, so you've got your 11 points in Holy. Then we're going to run over to the Protection Tree. If you're already 40, this is what it looks like. If you're not 40, what I would recommend doing first, Improve Devotion Aura. Three points into precision, two points into readout. Well, you can go ahead and max readout because you're going to put three points into shield specialization and then you're going to put four points into toughness. So this is your level 40 spot. All right. As soon as you hit 41, this build is going to be way better because you are no longer going to be using blessing of might, which is why I didn't get blessing of kings because I'll go over that in a minute. But you are going to be using Blessing of Sanctuary. It places a blessing on the friendly target, reducing damage from all sources by up to 10. In addition, when the target blocks a melee attack, the attacker takes damage. This is what makes Reflect work the best because we're going to be blocking. This is going to make us block more. And this is just going to make us take less damage overall. It's going to make AoE grinding out in the world incredible. All right, so 41, you grab that. Then you put... Five points into Reckoning. I know as soon as you get four, you can put points in a one-handed weapon specialization, but we want a 100% chance after taking a critical hit to be able to get another attack. And then we'll put our last four points into one-handed weapon specialization. So that's going to make us deal a little more damage. And then this is what we're at. So the reason I did not put any points in Anticipation increases your defense skill by two. We can't get uncritable, and thanks to Reckoning, we don't really want to get uncritable. So, we'll just put those points into Reckoning. We're not going to use Anticipation. This is what we're looking like. So, for runes, chest, divine storm, and some weapon attack, this is mostly for the heal. So, when you're playing this, you're going to be using your Seal of Light to heal you up on your autos and on your Reckoning swings. And this is going to be the reason you are healing up so much. And this is also the reason why we're using a slow one-hander instead of a fast one-hander. Because it's going to you do 110% weapon damage up to four enemies and you heal for 25% of the damage caused. So you should always be pulling at minimum four enemies, more if you can. 
That way you can always hit four, you can always get this hill, and you're always going to be staying topped up with that. On your head, what you're going to do as soon as you can, 100% of the time, I would say go to Wrath. Just amazing. Um, also, improved Sanctuary. I think it's going to be good because it's going to make you take damage, less damage because it's going to increase the damage prevented by it and increase the damage of your Blessing and Sanctuary by 30% of your shield block value. So the more strength you have, the more your blocks are going to deal damage on your Blessing and Sanctuary. It's going to make it skill with your stats, which is going to be amazing. But I think based on what we have now, Consecration being able to crit is going to be the bee's knees. All right. So Wrath in the Head when you can get it. The Wrist... We don't really have a lot of good things here for AoE grinding, um, but I think Hammer of the Righteous is going to be the best. So it's going to be dealing damage to three targets, four times our main hand damage. That's just going to be, it's another instant attack to proc your seal. It's another instant attack to heal you up with your seal. It's another instant attack to deal more damage. If you wait till the mob's low, bang, there you go. So that's what I think we're going to have there. Um, so Crusader Strike on your gloves is going to help keep your mana up. If you're in a group, this is what you change. You make this Hand of Reckoning, and there you go. Waste, Sheath of Light. This is a non-negotiable. You need that extra spell power because it gives you spell power to the amount of your attack power. That's why we're using this to begin with. That's why we're using Blessing of Might. You have to have Sheath of Light. After you get actual factual shocketing gear, you can switch away from that. But for now, Sheet of Light. Legs, Exorcist, this is just going to make it easy when a mob starts running away from you so they don't leash more. You can just exorcism them, let them fall over, it's going to be fine. You can also use Avenger Shield, but either or, whatever floats your boat, Avenger Shield is going to give them a slow. It's going to help you deal a little more damage. It's going to help you do all that. Um, it's a good pulling tool, but so is Exorcism. I like Exorcism, but both of those are good. And then guarded by the light in your feet. This is the other thing you change if you're in group play. If you're in group play, you don't need guarded by the light because your mana is going to be coming back from Reckoning. So you switch over to the Art of War. And what the Art of War is going to do is it's going to make it where you get your cooldowns back on your Exorcism quicker. And it's going to make it where your single target threat and damage is higher. This is going to be awesome to have. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be fun. Um, there's also argument for once we get to a certain point and all we're doing is AoE grinding, um, that Sacred Shield may be able to prevent enough damage that we don't even have to worry about it, um, but we're not there yet. And like I was saying, your gear doesn't really matter. Once you hit 40, try to get as much plate as you can. You need strength. You need stamina. That is really all you need. So what I'm going to do here, um, since my character is currently just hanging out in Stormwind, I'm just going to show you kind of how this works so you put your seal on you go you bonk some mobs currently with this really crap gear what i can do is pull two or three rooms at a time without any issues so the big thing you are trying to make sure you're doing is keeping consecrate down on cooldown keeping your mana up and using your divine storm which i don't even have on and the whole point of doing this this way is to show you that divine storm is what keeps you alive so as you can see, I'm doing well, I'm healing up, I can heal myself with Holy Light if I want. But as you can see here, you have to cleanse off these things. You can stay alive without Divine Storm. But what I will show you after this is that once you put Divine Storm on, you are so much more able to do basically whatever you want at that point. Um, Right now, I am using the PvP setup. That's why my Holy Shock keeps getting reset. As you can see, my mana is not the best. So we're kind of struggling in that department, but it's still doable, right? Now, you will see when I switch everything over and you get to see what I'm doing. Oh, look, we had to lay on hands because what we're doing, right? Now, I will tell you, once we switch, night and day. So go ahead and finish this pool. I didn't think it would take me as long to kill these guys because normally I'm doing it properly and we're ripping their pepperonis, right? So here's what I'll do for you since I don't really want to take any more time on this pull. Um, after these other mobs go down, I'll run out and reset instead of having to auto attack that one into the dirt. Um, so, all right. Bomb. Here we go. So, our blessing ran out because I was talking in between time. 
All right, so now what you can do is don't be a derp and reset it so you don't have to run very far. Now, reset all instances. So we're going to put the proper runes on. Divine Storm on the chest. I have a Divine Storm macro I'm going to put down here. What that Divine Storm macro does is uses my... Um, whoop, I will show you what it does. My Divine Storm macro uses my Divine Storm, uses my Divine Favor, and uses 13, which is my trinket. So we want to use that all the time. We also want to go ahead and switch over to Guarded by the Light because the Art of War doesn't give us back anything other than cooldowns, right? Now, as you can see here, I'm going to go in here with not very much mana, and I'm just going to go ahead and pull, and you can be able to see the difference. So I'm going to do the same exact thing, except for now my runes are correct. So we're going to go in here. We're going to grab these mobs. We're going to grab this guy. Oh, apparently we're not. All right, there we go. And then we're going to go back over here. We're going to grab all these guys. And you'll notice I don't ever even use Judgment, right? So, obviously, if you can cleanse something off, you cleanse it off. But, okay, I'm at 70%. I'm at 93. Cleanse it off, right? And with this build, you can use Holy Shock to heal yourself up if you want. Um, remember, its heal is reduced by 50% because of our Guarded by the Light. But you keep your Seal of Light up. You keep up your cooldowns. You keep Crusader Strike on cooldown. And you Divine Storm on cooldown. And as you can see, our health is barely moving, right? So make sure you're cleansing off anything that you can cleanse as usual. All right, so bang, we just got 14% of our HP as a heal. Going to go ahead and roll that off. And you can see they're dying so much faster. We're just rolling through. There you go. Make sure if your target that you're currently hitting around the way, you tab so you're hitting something else. Your seal falls off, pull it back up. And this is literally going to be the easiest, most chill, most fun way to level. Um, this is just going to be easy out in the world, open world grinding or grinding a dungeon that is uh, has, you know, high level green or low level yellow mobs to your level requirement. And as you can see, we didn't have any mana problems. Our mana came back as we needed it. I made that pull without having full mana. My HP was never in trouble. I never had to use any cooldowns, and we pulled a ton of mobs. Um, you can do this out in the world. So the only thing you have to learn, the learning curve is, how many mobs can I pull and not get ripping pepperoni? That's literally it. Get a slow, big-hitting one-hander to make your Divine Storm heal harder. Use Seal of Light. Set your spec up properly. Make sure you have the right runes. You are going to breeze your way either in the open world AoE grinding or grinding dungeons with your buddies all the way to 50. Not going to be a problem. See you guys out there in a couple hours.